Thanks for coming. Thanks for braving it through the uh, sudden, sudden deluges which kept coming up today. You'd think, if you didn't know better, that someone didn't want us to make it here. But we'll, uh, that, w that was intended as a joke. Uh, but we'll, <laughs> we'll discuss why or why not uh, uh, later on. But I would like to start by uh, thanking uh, Asian Film Archive, Karen Chan, uh, 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 Kay Wee for, for helping set this up, uh, and for the Arts House for, for hosting uh, this event. Uh, as as uh, Kay Wee mentioned, uh, this is uh, a culmination of, of this screening series of films, all of which have to do with uh, aspects of history, uh, political <coughs> history, uh, and which are uh, films which are representing uh, political hist history, not through documentary, but through uh, narrative uh, form. Uh, but they're also films, I would, uh, to, cut, to cut to the, to the chase, they're also all films uh, that really pose very incisive questions through their narratives uh, about uh, political action, even political resistance uh, about uh, the ethics of that, uh, when one should, when one sh should feel that one uh, ought to uh, take uh, political action of some kind, uh, what form uh, is reasonable to take, uh, and also what is the outcomes, what are the personal repercussions uh, of making this kind of decision. Uh, all the films dramatize this uh, in one way um, or another. Um, now, don't worry, this forum today it won't just be me talking, or even mostly me talking. I'll, I'll give a brief introduction, and then what we'll do is uh, ask a series of general questions and, and let um, each of the filmmakers uh, answer one after another. Uh, and then uh, we'll allow time uh, remaining for people to ask uh, what questions you might have um, about the filmmakers uh, or their films. Uh, but I would just, by way of an introduction, like to First of all, warn you that if you haven't seen all the films, yes, there will be some spoilers, but you know, this is the kind of film where uh, it's not gonna give too, too much away if you, if you know what the, uh, what the ending point um, uh, is. Uh, but I would also uh, like to remark upon the fact that uh, 20 years ago, uh, it would be very difficult to get this kind of forum together. These kinds of films probably would not have existed uh, from Southeast Asia in such numbers. Uh, that there, there really is a, a happenstance of history right now that's worth thinking about, uh, that there is this uh, much momentum in terms of uh, an independent cinema from Southeast Asia that's very cinematically sophisticated and politically sophisticated at the same time that, that the curators of this indeed would have had a, a big choice to, to uh, select from in, in setting up this kind of program. Uh, this is a new stage in Southeast uh, Asian film history, not sudden, uh, it, it, it was gradually over the past 20 years, but this wouldn't uh, have been so possible um, 20 years ago uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, and why do I pick 20 years ago as a starting point? Well, a lot of people take note that that was the time of the Asian financial crisis, uh, but that meant a, a change in consciousness where uh, people locally saw that, gee, we're not doing so well uh, after this, we have to follow these IMF regulations. Uh, we were in bed with the West in terms of our finances, and uh, look, we weren't protected here. Uh, all our markets came into trouble. Uh, all these local businesses are not now being helped out so well. Uh, shouldn't we be doing it for ourselves? And this was really a consciousness that started to pervade in a lot of Southeast Asia 20 years ago, thinking about, well, how do we set up things so that things can be sustainably locally on a variety of levels, including uh, in the arts? Uh, why can't we have our own film production? Uh, why can't we have our own films playing in the local cinemas, which by and large were not, was not the case 20 years ago, but by and large is the case uh, now. Not that the cinemas are dominated by local productions in Southeast Asian countries, but there's regular regional fare um, in cinemas. That wasn't the case uh, 20 years ago. So that was a push away from the West, and there was also a pull toward Southeast Asia in terms of the development of ASEAN, uh, at the same time, which came online uh, more fully uh, uh, recently. So there are these uh, general political um, uh, uh, shifts, uh, but also the rise of a film culture in a lot of these uh, countries. There were a few local hits uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, which made young people start to pay attention to film as a viable local form. Uh, short film festivals, starting with the Thai film festival, uh, Thai short film festival, very importantly, but with a range of others that have started across the region. Uh, film screening programs like this one, 
Uh, but gradually over time, not instantaneously, but gradually over those two decades, uh, a, a real and solid film culture has developed, which is helping produce more um, uh, young filmmakers. And then another important, very practical factor, which is often noted, uh, is the new availability, which wasn't around 20 years ago, of uh, inexpensive digital film technology. Things were still being shot on film stock uh, in the late 90s. Now nothing is being shot on film stock, and the new technologies are a lot cheaper uh, and a lot more accessible. Um, and then in terms of the political context and how that's changed, well, it hasn't been a straight line. Uh, in some ways, things have liberalized uh, now and again, but now and again they've moved in the other direction uh, as well. So that's been uneven, even though there have been uh, uh, movements in terms of, of um, the freedom of political discourse over that time. Uh, but in any event, my point is, the, the overall outcome uh, of this is we're now in a context that historically, film historically, that's very different than 20 years ago, that this couldn't have existed for a range of reasons um, uh, um, uh, 20 years ago. Um, so I want to turn to the films themselves that we're going to be uh, looking at today uh, and again open up a, a, a few general questions uh, um, about what ties these films together um, in the first instance rather than the individual uh, films because again this is uh, um, what, what, <coughs> the, what we're taking advantage of for this particular forum. Why is this a common kind of phenomenon? Why do we see uh, uh, filmmakers from across the region uh, having sim taking similar kind of tack or parallel kind of tack uh, with similar kinds of, of um, interests? A and one thing, again, that holds all these films together is that they're interested in exploring certain real-world historical facts. They all have certain real-world uh, historical reference uh, which the individual filmmakers have found to be of ongoing significance for one reason or another, uh, or they wouldn't return to them for their films. And gee, that's another thing uh, uh, that all these films have in common, that they all involve a return to these historical facts, if not a reenactment of these historical facts. And we see a number of reenactments across these films, if not a, a little return, indeed the return being uh, the title of your film. So why don't we go director by director uh, and ask, uh, first of all, to provide you with background, what are the key historical reference, what are the key historical reference points uh, for your films? Uh, and then why did you select these reference points? Why are they important to you? Uh, why is a return to them or a reenactment of them uh, important to you? Hello. Um, I think it's for the return of my film. Uh, I think it's quite difficult to, uh, to pinpoint a certain uh, event. But if I have to, I think it's this, the film is the most important uh, event in the film that sort of shaped the whole narrative is the, the Chinese student movement of the 1950s and 60s. And I think that is the um, starting point or the catalyst of the, the why I make the film. And I guess it's uh, on a personal level, it, it's the main criteria is, itself is quite close to my father and his generation. Uh, the, he, the main character is uh, a Chinese educated person uh, who is very involved in the political movements of the time and uh, because of his uh, beliefs and in his inclination he was uh, uh, arrested without trial and uh, incarcerated uh, for many years and then that's the, what the film is about. So uh, the context of the whole film is basically uh, pre-independence and uh, the student movement and the politi political movements of the time, and how we um, view uh, communism and the left and uh, China, China, I guess, in a sense. And, uh, and that is the context of the film, I guess. To add to that, can you talk a little bit about why this might be important now? Why are you making a film about this now? Why is it important to create uh, fiction, I guess, uh, or narrative like that? Because I think that um, the idea of fiction has um, some kind of uh, fidelity with the present. And also it has an impact or an effect on the, the future. 
in a way, it op fiction opens up the possibility of uh, of uh, of truth. In a way, fiction is a sort of a um, experiment of truth. So that's why I think it's important to, at least in a sense for me, to create a fiction because it, it does sort of create a kind of a, I won't say alternative, but a, 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 another interpretation of uh, of the dominant discourse. Uh, Particularly the, the the construction of history, I guess. Yeah. Edmund. Okay. Oh, same question. So, yes. Yeah, so All right. Um, so I'll provide a uh, context for Revolve Exploding Durians. Um, mine. I think I developed the story around like 2013. So like two years earlier. Um, I mean the 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 real life event was that um, Linus, this Australian company, they decided to build um, this rare earth plant um, near this coastal town. Um, and there were some major protests because um, these plants are like um, potentially radioactive. Um, like in the 90s, Mitsubishi built a similar plant um, in Malaysia. Uh, it was pretty disastrous. Um, like the, um, people staying nearby, they had like leukemia, uh, babies were like deformed, so they didn't want to risk this. So there, there was a massive uh, protest going on um, regarding the, the construction of this rail plant. So while that happened, a couple of uh, Malaysian directors they did a series of short films uh, called um, "Welcome to Radioactive Village." Um, they were all like really funny uh, videos that were meant to uh, raise awareness uh, regarding this um, project. Um, so that was like, around 2011, 2012. So a year, so I, I felt left out because like why why were they doing this and I'm not part of the the movement you know uh, at that time I was in uh, Japan uh, for a couple of years I was based in Japan so I was like ah you know you guys are like fighting the fight and I'm not <laughs> so uh, I went back to Malaysia I decided to join into uh, um, I was a little younger than most of them so I was more idealistic uh, I decided to make a, a feature film using that as a, a backdrop um, of course the I. Um, I was also, f I'm, I'm always fascinated in making films where, um, you know, to reflect the, the, um, the contemporary um, society. Uh, so at that time, those things were happening. There were a lot of things happening during that period of time. There were like some large scale uh, demonstration, protests, uh, the Bursay movement where uh, people were like, it was like before election and people were asking for a transparent um, um, voting election system. So all these things were going on um, um, while I was writing the script. Um, so I, I thought if I want to explore um, uh, what Malaysia is like right now, uh, I'm going to do it. Uh, but through the, the perspectives of um, uh, like uh, teenagers, because at the time I was about to turn uh, dirty. <laughs> so I, I was kind of nostalgic. Like I was imagining like, what would happen if I, I, I was a teenager and, and I was I would experience these things. I, I don't remember my, my, I think my teenage life was way more uh, uh, simple. Maybe I was politically uh, apathetic. Uh, I didn't care that much. So maybe what happens like, uh, if I was there? At the same time, it was also, the story was also tr shown through the, story, uh, through the perspective of a, a teacher uh, who was closer to me like, uh, in terms of age. So you know, I, I, I wanted to explore this whole thing. Um, through the perspectives of uh, people of different ages. Um, so, you know, but of course, while, while I'm doing these things, uh, you know, I, I became, I, was start, I started digging into history. Um, like, so there were like class reenactments of uh, Southeast Asian history. Uh, they were never planned because I, I did the film in a very organic manner. Um, but at the time, I think through research, I found out uh, about the Tamasat massacre, uh, which happened in, in um, Bangkok. Uh, there were also the, the, um, the martial law in Philippines. Um, so I was like, so yeah, I realized that history is sort of like cyclical. Like, like there were all these like uh, um, uh, repression, you know, like uh, uh, um, media being censored, people dying for to fight for human rights. These things were already happening in the past, like in the seventies. Like it's always been happening, and what we were experiencing at that particular moment, it's sort of like an echo of uh, what happened back then. So, um, so I, yeah, I guess it became more like a, I don't really provide answers. I mean, I, I made the film but, just. But you draw question. you draw the arrow toward a larger regional history rather yeah, than yeah, just yeah. A mm -hmm. contemporaneous yeah, 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 Malaysian yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, 
So I did. <laughs> okay, great. Right. And, and Anocha, sorry to make you the history teacher for the group, but there are some uh, big events that I think not all of us are aware of, so maybe you can give at least a brief sketch uh, um, as the initial question of what are those historical references, and then uh, talk a little bit about why those are important to you or to ties now. Well, we started in 2013, and then we, we sort of uh, premiered in 2015. Yeah. So, yeah. And your film was? Yeah, started in 2013, premiered in 2014. Yeah. Should I say that now? <laughs> okay, um, I started writing in 2010, and I finished the film last year, so 2016. Yeah. Um, so, the... Yeah, the, the film centers around, by the time it gets dark, the title of the film, centers around the, the massacre, known in Thailand as October 6th massacre, but elsewhere as Thammasat University massacre. And actually, 1970s in Thailand was a turbulent period um, in terms of political history. Uh, it was very, there were a lot of protests, um, Actually, in 1973, um, the, it was a year of victory, actually. They managed to get rid of a, uh, an army general who was a di dictator, who was ruling Thailand for about 10 years, and so he fled the country. In 76, only three years later, he returned to Thailand as a monk, and um, in a way to protect himself. Because yeah, if if you're wearing yeah, like a, in Thailand, you know we like a very religious kind of, you know, country, um, so we're not supposed to harm <laughs> any monks. But he so he came back as a monk wearing a, a saffron robe, and but that enraged a lot of people, and so they were protesting against his return, and the student protesters were occupying Thammasat University. And uh, the situation just got more heated. And on October 6, uh, the army, the, the police, and right wing paramilitary groups uh, started to beat up, and, and the, uh, um, the police opened fire uh, in, in, into the protesters, uh, which resulted in, in a lot of deaths and casualties and disappearance. And, and I was saying this earlier, that if you read on Wikipedia, I think it only mentioned that there were maybe 40 or 50 deaths, which was absolutely untrue. Um, so it, I think, yeah, unofficially, there were maybe more than 100 deaths and like thousands of disappearance. And a, a lot of people fled uh, to the jungle and joined the Communist Party. And actually, this part of history is largely forgotten um, in Thailand. But it was, um, I think, uh, because we, in Thailand, if, if this, this, this subject matter is not uh, discussed or even taught in schools, so it's, you know, it's never mentioned in official history. So. Yeah, it, I w there's been like a uh, organized effort to obliterate this or distort uh, this part of you know, uh, political history from the present day. But last year was the 40th anniversary of, of the the massacre, so now people are, I think, <coughs> revisiting yeah, that part of history. But also because I think. Thailand is going through <coughs> very weird phase. You know, we are kind of reliving the 70s. Now we are under military rule again. And um, in a way, it's very similar to what was happening in the 70s. Um, the country is turning <coughs> very right wing. And um, yeah, there are a lot of echoes from the past. 
So, but the reason why I, I wanted to make this film and how it matters to me on a personal level <coughs> was because I was born that year in 1976. Sorry, it's, I'm not like being emotional. <laughs> it's really my throat that's yeah, giving sorry. away. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. So we have we have a uh, a. Um, a, a figurative reenactment in that this is relevant. I'll let you continue. Yes. Come, coming around again, and then the film very cleverly plays this out in the form of multiple forms of, of literal reenactments at different levels of, of the film. Yeah, yeah. So, um, um, so yeah, I, because I, you know, I said that the, the film, the, the, the massacre is, is not is not part of official history, so I never studied it when I was you know, a, a, a child you know, and in school. But I w came across it when I was in my early teens, reading books, and and so I began to develop like a curiosity, and you know, I, w I w was I wondered why no one ever talked about it, and it, I started to feel like a personal connection to it because it only happened a few months after I was born. And so, in a sense, it has stayed with me um, ever since I knew of it. And so when I was de developing uh, my, when I was finishing my first film, I started to develop this project. And, and I, I initially, I even developed a documentary you know, about the massacre, which, has not <coughs> been made. Um, there are many complications um, and how to address this. You know, this the, the, because like I guess you know this, the subject is still a little bit of a taboo in Thailand. And it, it, I, I don't want to overplay it, but um, you know there is, there have been a lot of studies and and you know, texts written on on the massacre, but um, you cannot really say everything because you know, it's um, illegal <laughs> in my country, yeah. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I think it's very relevant to what's going on in Thailand right now. So, yeah, that's why I wanted to make this film. And people, I think, have some awareness of what's going on in Thailand right now, and we'll leave that at that. Okay, uh, Angie, could you talk a little bit about the historical background uh, for your film, which was uh, Solo Solitude? Um, uh, maybe some of you know that in Indonesia we have, passing the, the history that uh, we have a dictatorship uh, uh, under the military Suharto uh, regime uh, start from 65 and ended in uh, 1998 and at the times there is only three uh, like legal uh, legal party which is actually like a more nationalist party more like government party and one is a uh, um, uh, uh, Muslim party that a law under the that allow by the, 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 the constitution. And, um, but there, uh, uh, it was a lot of uh, young people who struggle to get the democracy and they often uh, make uh, demonstra demonstrations. And of course, uh, it's, uh, it's always destroyed by the, the military or the, or, uh, the organs, uh, the, the legal organs to uh, to, 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 to cut down all the protests. In the 1996, uh, a group of uh, young people established uh, a, a, a party, a new party, it's called Partai Rakyat Demokratik, it's a Democratic People's Party, which is, is against the, the, the law. And it was in 22nd of July, 1996, and they make an announcement, which is actually it was a, it was a, like a, a, a peak of the some effort before, 
and they make uh, some discussion and they make uh, some uh, uh, like demonstrations. Um, after few days after the 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 establishment of the party, uh, there is a big riot in Jakarta, which is actually uh, in in country in Indonesia. There is, uh, uh, the political situation is getting uh, confusing. It's also because of the crisis, so people are not to not 100% uh, loyal anymore or not loyal uh, uh, mm. because to, during 32 years uh, Suharto playing a very nice uh, 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 movement on he is like a s always smile and everything so he look nice but if, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, bad uh, like a human right issues and a few days after, in the 27th of July, there was a big riot, and I think nine nine of the nine of the young peoples that declared declared the party is accused as a initiator of those of those uh, uh, riot, which is it's not at all. So um, one of the 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 one of the uh, uh, young people who who declared the party is actually is uh, Wiji Tukul that the is the protagonist the the main the main character of my film so he was uh, he is a uh, he was a, a, a poet and always make a, a protest poems uh, and uh, also write a very um, very uh, critical very critical uh, poems which is actually maybe not maybe not all of his poem is a, is to to uh, uh, offend something uh, to this, but some of some of the poem is very normal poems, which is telling the everyday life of uh, yeah, uh, of, of ordinary people. But of course, uh, everyday life of ordinary people under the uh, uh, pressure of the regime. Uh, one of his poem is always sought out in the in the uh, 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 demonstrations which contain with the words there is only one word racist so it's very very uh, very tough words and when someone go up into the 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 the, the uh, demonstrations and when the poem is uh, uh, sought out by one person when one say there is only one word, racist, and everybody will hold, going up his their hand and saying one thing, one word, racist, all all together. So we we G uh, hiding uh, after the after the announcement from the governments uh, that the uh, that that nine people is uh, uh, targeting as a uh, uh, by the governments with the with the uh, instructions if police or army cult or see the the peoples the nine peoples they can kill at the at the place and the side, yeah side. yeah so so it's 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 very scary uh, like yeah announcement so we did uh, hiding in in the borneo and try to Get connected with the in the in the local activists in Borneo and hiding in a in a in this, uh, uh, move from place to place uh, in Borneo. <coughs> so that's that's actually in the the, the the film about. Okay. Yeah. And he he remains important to you or to people in Indonesia. Why as a, a symbol for for resistance or? I think he is the symbol of resistance and symbol of. Uh, uh, because until now, okay, so I, I will continue my, my story. Sorry, I forgot something. Um, two, oh, I think like two, one month before Suharto make announcement that he uh, retired, Wiji is actually disappear until now. So there is, there is no, no information until now where is Wiji. Is he, but of course it's, 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 it's like a, like a, Someone is taking him, and there is no news until now about.
where is one where where is Vijina? So that's why he become a symbol. It remains an open question. <laughs>